Were Roman villas more like a medieval palace or a fancy resort? Could they be rented for a weekend on Airbnb? Do they at all resemble Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I'm Professor Jerome Arkenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the differences between a domus and a villa, and the difference between the Villa Urbana and the Villa Rustica. At the end, I'll have the wrap-up quote on this video. But first, make sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe, and the little bell thingy, so I can continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. In the suburbs surrounding Roman towns or cities, one might find the Villa Urbana, where the wealthy could escape the heat in a country home. Some were quite simple, others, as shown here, quite lavish, but all larger than the urban domus, usually with large courtyards, sometimes with large impluvium, or one might say swimming pools. Some, like Hadrian's villa at Tivoli, or more than lavish, akin to a palace, which of course is what Hadrian's villa was. These are all reconstructions of what Hadrian's palace would have looked like. The central gardens, a place for theatrical events. There's got to be a, there's an arena in here. Oh, that's, oh my goodness. Okay. Now, these types of villas were normally found around Rome itself the really palatial ones, directly on one of the lakes in the hills or on spectacular sites overlooking the Bay of Naples. The difference between a Villa Urbana and a Villa Rustica was that the latter was the nucleus of a latifundia, a Roman plantation, of which see my other video lecture, where the owner, or perhaps the latter's steward or manager, lived and ran the Latifundia. And in frontier provinces, and increasingly from the 2nd century AD, all of these start to be walled, becoming the forerunner of the medieval castle. The Villa Rustica was also far different from the Villa Urbana in that it generally had no luxuries, no colonnaded courtyards with bubbling fountains, in swimming pools, but some were better equipped than others. A better equipped rustic villa consisted of one, the Pars Urbana, where the owner or maybe the estate manager lived, which had a vestibulum, atrium, tablinum, cubiculi, culina, at least one triclinium and a rear colonnaded peristylium. So, in this case, not unlike a typical Roman domus. And given how far away it normally was from a city, it might even have its own caldarium or baths. Looks like fun what they're doing here. Attached to it, sometimes in the rear section, was the second part, the Pars Rustica. These were living quarters for cooks and slaves, where you would have the barns and stables, storerooms, granaries, probably a garden, herb garden and others, and occasionally a temple. The 
The wrap-up quote. The villa is large enough for all requirements. It is not expensive to keep in repair. At its entrance, there is a modest, but by no means mean-looking hall. Then comes the colonnaded courtyard. In a dining room running down towards the shore, folding windows on all sides of it, commanding a prospect of the sea, the inner court, the courtyard, the woods, and the hills. Then a swimming pool with a view of the sea. On one side, a tower has two sitting rooms on the ground floor, two more on the first floor, and above them, a dining room commanding a wide expanse of sea, a long stretch of shore, and the pleasantest villas of the neighborhood. Along its side stretches a covered portico, almost long enough for a public building. It has windows on both sides, most of them facing the sea. And then, my favorite place, a sunny chamber with a terrace on one side, the sea on the other. Pliny the Younger, 65 AD. Nice house. Let me know what you think of this quote in the comment section below. Also, what you liked about this video and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos. Be sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe as it will help me bring you more great videos. And make sure to click on that little bell thingy so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the past.